Hello, my name is Ben Wellings and I'm director of the Monash PPE degree. So what is PPE? Politics, philosophy and economics. That's uh, uh, so that's so much is obvious, but um, uh, I'll explain to you what that means in a, in a little moment. But let me run through what this talk is going to look like. So first of all, I'll explain what the PPE degree it is. And then I'll go into a little bit more detail and I'll say, well, what are you going to study in, in PPE? And of course, the study is not just about content, it's about skills. So then we could take a little bit of time and think about what kind of skills PPE graduates acquire during their time at Monash. And then I want to say um, a little bit about the overseas study opportunities that are built in uh, and bespoke to the Monash PPE degree. And that helps make it a little bit different from uh, studying PPE in other places. And then we'll spend a little bit of time thinking about, well, what kind of work do PPE graduates do? And the good news is there's lots of different careers that your PPE degree will prepare you for uh, and open up the possibility of. So let's think about then, what is this thing PPE? Well, obviously politics, philosophy and economics, but it's not just that because what we're asking you to do is to provide and, and hone analysis at the intersection of three foundational disciplines. And these three disciplines are really foundational for the way we understand the world and how it works. So politics has been dis defined as the study of who gets what, when, and how. It's antimonies, that is to say, the thing that is opposite to, are fate and necessity. So that implies that politics is about choice, but it's about collective choice. So it's not just about the individual, it's about making collective decisions. And all that implies understanding and coming to a, a consensus about what is a collective good. And these are precisely the kind of questions that philosophy helps us with, because philosophy asks the question why at the most fundamental levels. Why does it do that? It does it in search of a deeper understanding of the world around us and our place in it. So you can see that both those disciplines already have something in common. And then when we think about economics, economics is also in some ways about redistribution. It too is a little bit like who gets what, when and how, and it shares that in common with politics. But it's also understanding how incentives and constraints influence choices. Okay, and this can be at the individual micro level, or it can be at the social macro level. And all of these constraints and opportunities are the, the boundaries are put around our choice making to dis, uh, achieve desirable outcomes. So as you'll see, all of those three different disciplines have something to say to each other. Now that doesn't mean to say that they are absolutely the same. And oftentimes they're in creative tension with each other. But nevertheless, in terms of understanding the world around us, certainly for those of you interested in a career in public affairs or public life, these three disciplines are really crucial for you. So let's think about in some fine-grained detail then about what you will study in the Monash PPE degree. Now, the PPE degree at Monash has special core units that integrate the three disciplines. Now, certainly we say to you, it's important for you to get a foundation in politics. It's important for you to get a foundation in philosophy. It's important for you to get a foundation in economics. But we're interested, as I mentioned, in the intersection between those three. What, what's creative about mixing those three together? So that's why we have what we call our core units. And these core units, we start you off on first year with some really big ideas. We want you to think big. We want you to be ambitious. We want you to take seemingly abstract concepts and apply them to very real world dilemmas. And we do that in our big ideas unit by taking a, a, a single issue, say migration, and looking at all the political and economic uh, and philosophical dimensions of this that, that flow from it. So we might say, migrants are good for, e for, for the economy, right? There's a, there's a consensus around that. But then what do we do if we're on the basis of that action, we take in a lot of migrants uh, and some people in the democratic community don't like that. Do migrants have rights? Do 
people have a right to speak out against migrants. These are the ways in which we can take a, a, an issue such as migration. And from that, we, we look at the labor market, we look at democracy, we look at the, the whole concept of human rights. From one single issue, we can pull it apart and use all the three specializations to say something really unique about that particular topic. And as we go through the second year, we, uh, sorry, second semester of the first year, we introduce you into to policy analysis. And this is where we look at data Right? We, we look at the kinds of data and information that we are getting and how we understand that. We think about the epistemology of this. How do we know that? How do we know we know that? The kind of questions that philosophy can answer. And then we, we apply that politically. Well, what's possible? Even if this is knowable, even if this is desirable, what's possible? And that's where the politics comes in as well. And then we take a look at strategic reasoning. The philosophers take the lead here and they say, well, let's train you to think how to think, right? We're going to train you in this. We're going to give you the, 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 the rational and logical basis to make the best decision possible. So in that case, we then step you through um, towards our global study tour. And I'll talk about that separately. And at the end, we end up with the PPE in the world. And this is where we're going to hand the ball over to you. We're going to say you define a problem and you find solutions to it. We'll get in some real problem solving um, analysis and activities uh, on a real world issue. So by the time you step out of your PPE degree, you can say to a potential employer, not only do I know about that, but I know how to do something about it too. All of these are built on strong disciplinary knowledge. So this is what we call our specializations, politics and governance, philosophy and economic analysis. Right Now, in your first year, you'll do all of these things, but then you can specialize. You can really get some uh, a real depth of knowledge in, in any of those three and, and more through your elective units, which I'll explain about in a minute. But um, these are bespoke specializations specifically designed to serve the needs of the PPE degree. So the politics and governance isn't exactly the same as doing um, the, the politics uh, major in the Bachelor of Arts. It's a little bit different because we're interested in governance. That means we add a little bit of international relations as well and think about the global level of governance as well as the national level. The study tour is really important for PPE students because it takes you out of uh, again, it takes your learning out of the classroom, it takes your learning out of the country, and it takes you to two Indo-Pacific countries. And the idea there is we, we look at, again, real world problems and the kind of information, uh, the kind of analysis that PPE can bring to that. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a, in a moment. And then lastly, you get some elective units. Now, uh, with the PPE degree, with its three specialisations, you won't have as many units as, uh, say, your friend doing a Bachelor of Arts. Um, but that's because you're already chosen. You've already thought about what it is you want to do, and you've got a fairly clear idea. So we're encouraging deep thinkers to come into this degree, um, uh, and also people who probably have a sense of what type of specializations they want to do. But I do say keep an open, open mind because one of the skills that we want you to leave this degree with is, is, is with intellectual flexibility. Now, you're going to be doing that. That's going to be inbuilt into this degree because of the type of intersectional analysis that you'll be doing, right? So, so that's a sketch of how the degree uh, itself looks. Let me say a little bit more about the uh, international, the global study tour. Now, here I make no apology, but we're building on the success of the Global Immersion Guarantee or GIG program offered by um, the, the Faculty of Arts. But this is different from GIG. Uh, this is uh, the global study tour is specific to the PPE cohort. And one of the things that we're very keen to do with the PPE degree is to is to build a cohort for you, not just of the people in your year, but also peer networks, the people who've come before you and the people who are going to come after you doing the PPE degree, because networks are really crucial. And one of the, the, the cornerstones of the, uh, the cohort experience is the global study tour, um, which also builds on the government's new Colombo plan, which is a very successful program of helping uh, Australian students understand the Indo-Asia Pacific uh, region. It's non-compulsory, but it is highly encouraged, right? And it runs for three weeks 
and it's an intensive. Um, you will be taken um, by your, your uh, lecturer uh, on to these two countries, and we put you in touch with all the um, the partners and the Monash alumni who are now working in government and international relations and business. Uh, and, and we introduce you to, to, to them to get them to explain some of the issues that are important in their countries uh, in order to uh, for you to uh, think about and apply the PPE analytical framework to these particular problems. And we're going to be understanding a couple of major things. First of all, the, the, the overall framework is the political and economic power shift in the 21st century towards uh, the Asia-Pacific and South-South uh, relations. But also more specifically, where do cities fit into this? Where do the people who live in cities fit into this? Because those shifts in power are having an effect on the way that we live, where we live, who we live with. And so this study tool becomes a, a perfect opportunity to see how that is playing out in other parts of the world, and then we bring that comparative analysis back with us to Australia um, for our mutual benefit. So what kind of knowledge and skills will someone learn? Well, the first thing that I think about a PPE degree is it explains how the world works, right, politically and economically. And then when philosoph philosophy comes in, it explains how the world should work, right? So, but it gives you a kind of robust analytical and normative dimension to your understandings of the way that the cogs interact, right? And, and we know, of course, that um, nothing is permanent. So that means that change is possible. So it allows you to position yourself in relation to the existing way of doing things uh, and think about, well, what would you want to retain and what would you want to do differently? And you could exist on a spectrum between either of those, but um, you can only do that when you understand the way that the, the whole fits together. More specifically, and I'm drawing on the uh, Australian government's um, Future Jobs and Future Skills website, the uh, URL which is there for you if you would like to look at it, you will get what we call critical thinking. Now, I know that term is used quite often, but if we break it down, it really means robust and structured ways of analysing information. Okay, so if we think in, in terms of politics or political information, camp campaigning, we get a lot of information from a lot of different sources with a lot, lot of different agendas behind them. So PPE will help you think about, well, where's this data come from? How is it produced? Who's producing it? Um, and is it beneficial? It will allow you to establish criteria for measuring success, good, bad, negative, positive, and to filter all that information. And it will that from that vantage point, you'll be able to affect real complex problem solving to dilemmas in public life. Global pandemic is a great example of the kind of ethical dilemmas that come with a response to something that, uh, a phenomenon that we are aware of through data and statistics. So it's almost designed for PPE analysis, really. And we ask you to think strategically, to reason strategically, to apply logical analyses to situations, but also em empathetic and emotionally intelligent comprehension, right? These are really important skills, team building skills, skills that allow you to operate successfully in complex groups to achieve complex tasks in uncertain and moving situations. And lastly, effective and persuasive communication. You, you really can't underestimate the value of being able to write well, to speak well, uh, and to communicate your ideas in an effective way in order to get the outcomes that you desire. Where might that lead to next? First of all, I'll deal with study, and then I'll talk about jobs. If we think about honours and higher degree HDR, what we call higher degree by research, and that's MA and PhD, for philosophy, you would be open for the honours stream at the end of three years, assuming that you're doing the single PPE and not a double, right? If you do a double, it takes a little bit longer, um, and there are lots of benefits to doubles. Um, 
The master's level study is a two-year coursework degree, and we have a range of coursework uh, masters on offer. You could do the Masters of Public Policy, which segues very well uh, into uh, public life from a PPE degree. You could do a Masters of International Relations if you're interested in the global level of governance or even the international political economy. Um, and also a Masters of International Development Practice if a development stream was something that you were interested in for your career. There's also, of course, the Masters of Economics, uh, if you're looking for theoretical and applied understandings of um, uh, of that particular particular discipline. So if you then were thinking of a, of a PhD, then that would be something that you would generate in conjunction with uh, whoever would be supervising your PhD thesis. So that's more of an individual track. But these are the pathways that we have for um, uh, further study. Uh, and the PPE degree will, uh, as in all things, keep your options very much open and give you a lot of choices at the end of your degree. The same can be said, of course, about what kind of careers you might uh, uh, end up doing. And again, with the transferable skills that you have got from the PPE degree, you are well positioned for a quite a wide range of potential careers in which you can affect change. So when you finish your PPE degree, you will have the capabilities to understand and comprehend and argue for change. And this could be through politics and government could be through public service, and that could be federal and state. It could be working for multinational organizations and corporations, lobbying companies, analytical companies. So also think about large corporations. Uh, these are organizations who have already played a role in, in developing and contributing to the teaching program, very well-known private uh, consultancy firms, uh, and also uh, large public uh, corporations as well as government figures. But we've got non-governmental organizations as well uh, be interested. You'd be well-placed for research, teaching, journalism. So there's lots and lots that the PP degree will do. But importantly, uh, it strikes that balance between um, specialization and choice because you can specialize in one of the three PPE specializations. You can get all the benefits from the, um, the core units that, that integrate those three disciplines, but you, you've still kept open the possibility of um, uh, politics, economics, and philosophy as different career streams. So on that happy note, on the note that you will find a very rewarding career at the end of your PPE degree, we can't know exactly what that's going to be now, but PPE teaches you to operate in situations of uncertainty. So we're all comfortable with that. On that happy note, uh, I will end this presentation and uh, uh, I look forward to seeing you in PPE classes next year. Thank you. Goodbye.